Good morning children. Today we are discussing some interesting facts of sound. Sound is an important chapter in your physics and you have been learning about sound from your lower classes. We know one fact about sound. It is sound is a form of energy. We know different kinds of energy, mechanical energy, electrical energy, light energy, heat energy. In the same way, sound is also a form of energy. So now we are going to look at certain general things about sound before we study the physical properties of sound. So we are going to study the physical properties of sound in this chapter. But let us have some better understanding, a general idea of sound. Let us come to the first thing what we are going to discuss here is that types of sounds. All sounds are not alike. Right? All sounds are not alike. This is helpful for us. When even though you are blindfolded, even though you are in a dark room, you can notice, you can observe, you can percept so many things from your surroundings. You are on a busy road and your eyes are blindfolded. You can hear the sounds. Motorbike, you can identify. Car, you can identify. Bus, you can identify. Train, you can identify. Because they produce different sounds. So you are in the first floor. Somebody is calling from down. You didn't see who is that. But you will come to know that he is your brother. Or she is your mother. How do you know that? How could you guess that your mother is calling you? You will notice her voice. You will recognize her voice. That means all sounds are not alike. Sounds are different. That means the properties of each sound is different. And there are n number of sounds are produced around us. Our ears, they can... Listen to the sounds, they can receive the sound and they can analyze what the sound it is, basing upon the physical properties. That means your mind knows so many physical properties of sound better than you. So you are learning now in standard 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th. But you are already equipped with, your mind is equipped with such skills of identification. Even though you don't know all the, you, your mind doesn't know all the laws, formulas and everything, it can easily analyze. That is the capability of our brain. It will analyze so many sounds, basing upon their physical properties. So now here we are going to study the physical properties of sound. The first point here we are noticing, sounds are different. Different sounds. What is the difference? Your mother called you, your brother called you. What is the difference? Your father called you, your mother called you. You will be able to identify whether he is he or she is your mother or father. You will be able to identify that sound is your mother or father. But how? There is difference in the voice. Voice in the sense. There is difference in the sound. So by that way you can identify. So the difference in the sound in the sense, the properties of the sound produced by your father is different. The physical properties of the sound produced by your mother is different. So in this way you can identify. So sounds are of different types. Voices of people. Vocal sounds. Vocal sounds. Sounds are produced by a pair of vocal cords here. That is what we call it as speech or language. People use it to communicate. Different kind of languages. So the voice is one. Sounds of animals and birds, these are different. You go to a zoo park, you go to a garden, you will find so many sounds of birds chirping, animal sounds. So these are of different sounds. Music. Again, music is a collection of various sounds and number of sounds, different, different sounds. Music is a combination of different sounds. But it is an 
it is not an unorganized combination it is a well organized combination of musical instruments so when all these sounds are well organized or composed what we call it as composed a music director or a music composer will compose different musics so then you will get the music so music is pleasant we can enjoy it even though there are so many sounds involved in it it will be giving pleasure to us when we listen to music it is a recreational activity listening to music noise what is this noise noise is an unorganized sounds collection of unorganized sounds unwanted sounds sounds which have more okay i don't say any property right now physical property say that more loud unorganized not properly mixed so a band of four people they doesn't know how to play the musical instruments they are hitting like anything all the musical instruments without any rhythm the piano the keyboard and the drums or the cymbals or the saxophone what they have they are simply playing it out you will say it as a noise you go to a busy road all the bikes and cars vehicles they are giving the horns they are blowing the horns people are shouting so there you find lot of noise it's a collection of sounds these sounds are not pleasant and these sounds are not composed properly these sounds are very unorganized no connection with each other and just they are produced like that so such sounds are called as noise music sounds of animals voice sound of water water flowing air blowing trees moving their leaves so like this there are so many different types of sounds in the nature there are different kind of sounds in your environment even right so now you got an idea about different kinds of sounds the scope of sounds now come to the second one importance of sound is sound important can't we live without sounds right we can see the animals why do we enjoy that or why we need to enjoy the sound of the animal sound is also very important with the visual we can see the world we can see different colors different objects different animals plants and everything but at the same time the sound is also very important so by that we can guess the distance between different objects say somebody is giving a horn you can identify yes some vehicle is approaching even though you are not in a position to look at the vehicle you can listen to the sound and you can identify somebody is calling you so when somebody is calling then you will hear the sound with your ears and then you will turn in this in that direction respond to the person sound helps us to protect ourselves from various kinds of threats so sound is important sound is very important for our survival along with the vision right so that is the importance of this sound you see sound is used at different places vehicles they produce the sound to save the people from accident somebody is crossing the road the truck driver he blows the horn the train driver if somebody is there at the crossing some vehicle is at there at the crossing he will blow the horn in a factory there is some emergency so when there is emergency then the siren will be blown all the people will be alert because the siren is blown in a factory somewhere some damage happened short circuit happened some pipeline broken they will give the siren so siren gives the indication so you are in a class maths class science class 30 minutes 40 minutes over then there will be a ring so whether the teacher will change no one need not to come and tell the teacher you your class completed so it is because of the bell it is a sound so with the help of sounds there are so many things are happening right so sounds are helpful in this way vehicles are going there is an ambulance it gives a special sound so by that all the vehicles leave way to the ambulance so the life is saved i hope you got the importance of sound in our 
life, day-to-day -day life, right? We can listen to music, we can listen to news, we can get the information, you are able to listen to your teacher's speech and all this. So sound is a very good way of perception. So when you are small, when you are in a mon um, kindergarten, Montessori methods are used to teach you. That means your senses are used to make you learn the things, hearing, taste, touching, likewise. So we have different senses. We use this hearing sense more to learn more things. So that is the importance of the sound, right? So sound is what it helps. It protects and it helps in communication and it is used in safety and it is used in management. It is used in time management. You can keep a clock alarm to wake up early in the morning. That is a sound which makes you get wake up at 5 o'clock and study. It is nothing else. The alarm is nothing but a sound. So see that sound is helpful for your time management, sound is helpful for safety, sound is helpful for communication, sound is helpful for protection, protecting yourself from the accidents and threats, right? So that is the importance of the sound. The next one, problems with the sound. So, so far we discussed that sound is there everywhere and sound is very, very, very important for us. But at the same time, there are some problems with sound. What are these problems? Some sounds, of course, most of the sounds that are produced are unwanted sounds, unnecessary sounds, right? Just you are standing in this room, you are studying your book, you are getting prepared for tomorrow's exam. So in the next room, somebody is hitting a nail, it causes a lot of disturbance. You get a lot of sound, so by that you are disturbed, the sound it causes irritation, it disturbs your concentration. Sometime after uh, listening to such a hitting sound for a long period, you may get a headache. So when the sound is heard in an unwanted situation, when the loudness of, of the sound is high, when it is there for a long time, it shows its effect on our bodies. So we call it as sound pollution. Sound pollution is everywhere. If you are living in an urban place, cities and towns, there will be a lot of traffic, all the horns blowing and the vehicle sound. You are living near an industrial area, the machinery produces a lot of sound. We discussed about this in friction lesson. Machines produce a lot of sound. We use lubrication, lubricants to reduce the noise. So even the ha same happens here. If you are living in an industrial area, there will be a lot of sound pollution. You are living in a crowded area. All the people, you are living in a market area, people will be shouting, chatting, screaming. You get a lot of noise pollution. Sounds, when they are heard in large number for a long duration of time, they will show some effect. Right? So this is called as sound pollution. So we got a general idea about this sound. This is the introduction about the sound. Now what we are going to learn is some physical properties of sound. So now here, the first thing we are going to study is how is sound produced? The first doubt we get. We have seen about sound, the different types of sounds and the importance of sound, the disadvantages of sound. But here we get the question, how is sound produced? Sound is produced by Sound is produced by a vibrating body. Vibrating body. What is vibration? Vibration means the movement of an object. But why can't we call it as a movement? Why are we calling it as a vibration? Vibration is a very quick movement. The movement, it doesn't happen only in one direction. The movement, it happens in to and fro direction or back and forth. That means, say, if my hand is moving to and fro, 
so front back forth and back in this way if it is moving so quickly sometimes you cannot see that it is moving you call it as a vibration if you have a metal scale or a plastic scale just you hold the one end of it very tightly and just bend the other end and leave it you can see the vibration if you have a rubber band you stretch the rubber band to the maximum extent you can stretch then just pluck the rubber band just drag the string and leave it so then you will find you will observe the movement the quick movement of the string or the band then you can notice the vibration so vibrations are the quick movements of a body these vibrations produce sound so sound is produced by a vibrating body if you can find a vibrating body or you can make any body to vibrate then you can produce sound right if you cannot vibrate the body you cannot produce the sound now here we have different pictures you see different items are here we are going to learn how the sound is produced here in all these cases let us look at the first case here is a cooking pressure pan a pan a vessel a metal vessel with a plastic handle is here this is a metal vessel so this vessel is tied to a string it is hanging like this freely hanging this is a metal one it may be a steel or it may be aluminum or whatsoever it may be now if we hit this metal vessel with a spoon or with a stick or with a pencil if you hit you will get sound you can produce sound by hitting this what happens if you hit it will vibrate so it will vibrate the body of the vessel vibrates these vibrations produce the sound they cause the disturbance in the air so sound is produced so when you hit an ob a body an object if the object is having the property of vibration then you can produce the sound it is also important you cannot produce sounds by hitting all the objects the object must have that property of getting vibrated if the object is not having the property of getting vibrated you cannot produce sound say similarly you are hanging a pillow one pillow you have you are hanging here pillow what you keep in your bed you are hitting the pillow with a pencil do you get any sound no you are hitting the pillow with your hand do you get any sound no of course you may get it it is very less not audible but in case of the pillow you have a metal can you have a metal plate very thin plate you will get huge sound so the material is also important because the material it should be able to get vibrated when it is given with some force some hit such material and here hitting we are applying force we are hitting on an object means we are vibrating the object the vibrations produce the sound so this is yeah this is able to produce sound here what we are going to understand how the sound is produced so the sound is produced by vibrating body this metal vessel is a very good vibrating body when it is hit so its sound is produced the second case electric bell school bell so how the school bell gives sound here is the body of the bell this is made with a metal it is made with some kind of steel or brass brass produces good sound so the material selection of material is important to get a good quality sound so the brass metal here it there is a handle it is connected to an electric magnetic parts electromagnetic parts so these electromagnetic parts they are connected to the electric wire when your principal or when your attender uh, anybody who supervises the school if they wanted to give the bell if they press the button the electricity passes to this particular electromagnetic parts then they make this fulcrum to vibrate so this one it is hitting on the bell so as it is hitting on the bell when it hits the bell the bell gets vibrated 
and this will be continuously heating till the power supply is given. So the bell will be vibrating continuously. It gives a sound. The bell is, it is a, it can produce enough sound for the whole school. It depends upon how the bell is fixed there. Right? See, here the metal can is hanging. If you are holding with your both of your hands like this and if you keep the metal vessel in your lap and if you hit, you can't produce that much sound. It should be freely hanging. We will discuss why. See, the position, the arrangement, the material and the way the hit is given, the vibrations are produced. So here, the bell is fixed in such a way, freely fixed to that. So here, this lever is hitting the bell. The vibrations are produced. So these vibrations, the bell is round, the vibrations go in all the directions, this direction, this direction. Throughout the school, could hear. So third one, you can make this at your home. You take a plate, uh, you can take a meals plate, your meals plate, right? So which will be having a, a good enough wall. So in the meals plate, you take some water. Keep your place on a floor, better on a floor, better than a wooden table. You cannot produce good sound because wooden will absorb the sound. The wood will absorb the sound. Better place it on a floor or a tile. Then you hit it at the edges with the spoon. You can hear some sound. Here, not only hearing the sound, as you have taken some water in this vessel, you can see that some waves are produced. Right? Sound also produces. You can see that some certain waves are uh, produced in this particular vessel. You can make one more activity at home. Now, so far, we have seen different objects producing sound. From here onwards, we are seeing certain objects which are used as a musical instruments. Musical instruments are also the objects which produce the sound, but the sounds are pleasant, enjoyable. Not like the sounds produced in other cases. If you are hitting on a metal vessel, it is not pleasant. You cannot enjoy it for long. If it is, uh, you are hitting it uh, for some two minutes or three minutes, then in your family, everybody will shout, why are you making such noise? So here, let us see the different musical instruments and how the sound is produced from which part the sound is produced. See here, Iktara. This is a very simple musical instrument which you can make it at home. You can take a coconut shell and by using this, you can make this simple instrument which you can play sound. Here it has got strings which are very tight. These are the strings. So when you rub this string with another string against the, to this, then the sound is produced. So when you are vibrating, when you are giving force to the string, the string get vibrated. Not only the string, the string is fixed to your body. The body is also vibrated. So overall, the vibrations from the total musical instrument comes out with a sound. The vibrations not only come from the string. From the whole thing, the vibrations come and it gives some sound, which is pleasant, which we call it as a music. Right? If you see a flute, flute, the flute it gives sound. Here, the part which gets vibrates is that air column, the column inside the flute, air column. You see tabla, or you see other kind of uh, mridangam. So these instruments they have got membranes. So these are the membranes. So when they are hit, the membranes get vibrated and these vibrations pass inside and the whole mridangam, it gives the vibration, some sound. So the vibration of these membranes, both sides, along with the body, they produce some sound. So the source is this membrane. Because we are hitting the membrane, the vibrations are generated. So the output sound is because of the whole instrument. It produces some sound. Manjira. Two metal plates are hit. 
with both the hands called as cymbals they produce some kind of sound mud pots pots made up of clay and they are burnt to make them hard they are very hard so when these mud pots are hit they give some special sound right so the pot is hit here inside the pot there is some air column so these vibrations they give out some sound we call it as gatam some places it is called as gatam in some shapes it is called nut right so here it produces this sound but what sound is that music all the musical instruments you see the drums the drums they have a membrane stretchable membrane so this membrane when it is hit it produces the vibrations and the instrument gives out some sound what are the musical instruments you know flute the air column saxophone the air column shenai the air column mouth organ air column when the air is passed through different blades in the mouth organ it produces sound they gets vibrate mridangam membranes membranes drum membranes so in this way whatever may be the particular part in a musical instruments get vibrate because of the total instrument the design the material used in the instruments bring out a special sound the materials are very specific they cannot make the musical instruments with whatsoever the materials they like there will be a special material right so here the leather membranes are used here for mridangam and all nowadays synthetic materials are also available but the material must be having the property of producing such a quality sound which is pleasant and one more interesting musical instrument is the jal tarang this is a very simple instrument but produces different sound jal tarang a series of ceramic bowls or glass bowls filled with water the level of the water in each bowl is different see here two glasses similar glasses all the glasses we have taken are similar but what is the difference the water level is different if these bowls are hit with any stick or spoon or any other object they will give different sounds each one produces specific sound you know that there are seven sound notes in music sari ga ma pa da ni there are seven so these sounds are produced with this jal tarang you can compose a music you can use this as a keyboard to play a song because the column the air column present inside here is different here the air column is less here the air column is more the space is more air is more air is less this difference gives different sounds right so this were all the different musical instruments which produces the sound which we call it as a music but here we understood that the sound is produced by a vibrating body which body we are vibrating how we are vibrating how these vibrations where the vibrations are produced and how what kind of sound is coming out the final output see here we are just giving plucking the string it is producing some sound but if you take out the string separately and there if you do that vibration will it give the sound like this ektara no when the string is attached to this particular instrument then you will get that sound means when the vibrations are generated at the string these vibrations vibrate the total body of the instrument this particular base and the hollow inside so it produces a sound and when say for example you have taken the membrane out of the mridangam if you hit on the membrane will you get the sound like mridangam no the membrane has to be fixed here the membrane has to be fixed here in between there is some air column when you are hitting here the vibrations are generated so these generated vibrations they produce a special sound so this is how a sound is produced by physical objects and by musical instruments we are also producing sounds as humans what sounds we are producing so we are very intelligent compared to other animals animals they make some sounds but there is a limit they cannot communicate as like us they don't have a language but we can communicate we have a mother tongue we can communicate in mother tongue and we will learn 
two to three more languages when you study so if your mother tongue is hindi you will learn english you may learn some other language marathi gujarati or telugu tamil kannada there are so many languages some people learn other languages foreign languages french spanish so we can communicate in different different languages every language has got some special sounds our voice is able to produce such special sounds but what we have in our mouth to produce sounds here we learned the fact that sound is produced by vibrating body it is a fact proven statement it means we also having some vibrating bodies in our throat which produces the sound you see if you see a mimicry show imitating there the person imitates the voices of children women animals politicians film stars sounds of different vehicles all he produces with his voice right here we have seen one musical instrument will produce one specific sound but you see that human voice can produce so many sounds if you see a mimicry artist he produce hundreds of varieties of sounds he may speak like you he may speak like your friend he may speak like your father he may speak like any celebrity film star or politician so this is all now let us see how our voice is produced how humans produce sounds now let us see the sounds produced by humans we have seen musical instruments they have special parts by vibrating those parts we can produce the sound you see a ektara a sitar if you plug the string the string it creates the vibration so these vibrations they bring out some sound from that instrument right so now let us see in case of humans which part gets vibrated what is the source of vibrations and how sounds are produced if you see the human anatomy here is a human figure showing that the air column the air passages this is the nose through which we breathe this is the nasal column or we call it as a nasal passages here nasal cavity so from here the air it goes to the pipe called as wind pipe as the wind is going inside you call it as a wind pipe through the wind pipe the air it goes to the two lungs left and right lungs we're talking about the production of sound here in this case so the sound producing organ or the sound producing part is connected with the respiratory tract in humans here this particular location of this particular pipe is called as larynx or voice box voice box this is the voice box so sometimes when you are talking or singing then you can put your fingers on this particular part here generally in case of voice here you can find some hard structure it is called as adam's apple you can notice if somebody is having a thin body or a lean body it will be more prominent if you if you put your fingers on this when you are talking you can feel the vibrations you can sense the vibrations so this particular part is called as voice box it is made up of a hard part called as cartilage it is made up of cartilage soft bone of your body so this voice box it has got two membranes stretched so here the voice box it consists of two that is a pair of vocal cords so what are these vocal cords they are like stretched rubber membranes so these vocal cords are just like a stretched membranes so when we exhale the air that means when we release the air out from the lungs the air is pushed out during exhalation the air is passing from the lungs to this wind pipe trachea so the air it goes out through this voice box as the air is passing through the voice box the air is made to pass through the gap between the vocal cords so there is a very little gap generally we call it as a slit 
Slit means a very little gap. Where is that little gap between the two vocal cords? How are the vocal cords? They are like stretched rubber membrane. So when the air is allowed to pass through the slit present between two rubber membranes, that is two vocal cords, the vocal cords vibrate. The vocal cords are attached to muscles. Our brain is giving command to the muscles to stretch and relax. Depends upon the signal, the stretching and relaxation will be there. Depends upon the amount of stretching and relaxations, the vocal cord vibrations will be varied. So we are able to produce different sounds. So we are able to produce the sound only during exhalation of the air. While taking the air inside, you cannot speak. It is not possible. Don't try it. You can speak only while you exhale the air. Means we can speak only with the air which is coming out of our body. The air which is coming through the trachea, it passes through the wind box. So the wind box is equipped with a pair of vocal cords. So when the air comes out, the vocal cords vibrate. So this is how sound is produced by humans. But in human voice, there are variations, man, women. So gents voice is different, women's voice is different. What is the difference? That is the difference in the length of vocal cords. If you take males, that is men, in men, the vocal cord size is 20 millimeters. In women and small children, it is short, 5 mm. So this makes the difference, right? So the male voice is much deeper. It has got good bass, loud. Whereas if you take the female, their voice, it is different, squeaking voice, right? So the difference is brought by this, the length of the vocal cords. But here we understood how the sound is produced in humans. In humans, the sound is produced by voice box. The voice box is equipped with vocal cords. Those are the special membranes. By exhaling the air, we make the vocal cords vibrate and these vibrations bring out sounds. Now let us see the sound, how it is produced. We have seen. The sound is produced, okay. The sound has to travel from place to place. So how it travels? Say, you have to go to school from your house. How do you go? You will be having different options. Either your father or mother may drop you at the school on their two-wheeler or four-wheeler. Or you may take the school bus to go to school. Or you may take auto rickshaw to go to school. But somehow, you need something to go to school. In the same way, the sound also needs a medium for propagation. Without a medium, sound cannot be propagated. You are shouting. Somebody will listen in the, next, in the next room or close to you. The sound must travel from your mouth to the ear of the second person. Then only he will be able to listen to you. So the sound must travel. It should propagate through a medium. It requires a medium, needs a medium. What does it show? Sound needs a medium for propagation. If there is no medium, sound cannot be propagated. Let us see. Let us look at a small activity by which we can understand. Here is a tumbler. You have taken a cell phone, a small one which fits into the tumbler. And you asked your friend to give a ring with another cell phone. So here the cell phone is ringing. If you are here, the vibrations they reach to your ear. You could hear that. Right? You can listen to these vibrations. The vibrations are passing through a medium that is the air. So what is the medium here? Air. How can we prove that it is air? Let us see. 
So this person or you have kept the glass tumbler here close to your mouth. Inside the glass tumbler cell phone is there. See that there is no water in the glass tumbler. So you kept it on your mouth like no air is inside and slowly with your mouth you are sucking the air present in the glass tumbler. What are what you are doing? Sucking the air means you are removing the air inside. Now again you asked your friend to give a ring with another cell phone. Another cell phone. So from here the signal goes to this and it rings. As you are sucking the air, the sound of the cell phone, the ring of the cell phone gets fainted, becoming slow, slow, slow. The volume becomes less, less, less. As the air is being sucked, after some time, if the air is totally sucked up, you can't hear the ring. What it proves, air is a medium for the propagation of sound. Sound travels through air. If there is no air, no sound can travel. That is the reason if you go to outer space, onto moon where there is no air, two people cannot talk because there is no air to propagate the sound. So here we have seen air is a medium of propagation of sound, but only the air. Let us see one more activity. Here you have taken a water tank, let it be an aquarium or something. So it is filled with water. Now you have taken a handbell, a handbell which is used in performing pujas. We ring that bell, small bell, a handbell is taken. And the handbell is moved inside the water, the bell is ringing. Could you hear the sound outside? You are shaking the bell inside the water. Can you hear the sound outside? No. So you have kept your head. You kept your head, you kept your ear touching the water. See that the water doesn't enter your ear. You will get ear pain. Just your ear touches the water. Then you can hear the sound. That means the sound, it is propagated through water. Here we have observed that the sound, it propagates through air. Here water. So water is also a medium for the propagation of sound along with air, air and water. The sound travels through water. So, such kind of appliances or equipment are used by the ships to know, to notice what are the obstructions on the way of the ship under the water, which cannot be seen. The sounds produced by dolphins and whales used to communicate. The sound travels through the water. If it doesn't travel through the water, it is not possible for the communication. Sounds that travel through water. Sounds that travel through air. But only these two, air and water. The sounds, they even propagate through solids. Solids. What are solids? Any objects which are made up of wood, which are made up of metal, paper, thread. Let us see an activity. Say you are here and your friend is here. Right? And uh, you have taken a scale, wooden scale, long one meter scale. Your friend is holding the scale with his hands. And you are at this point. So your friend is scratching the scale here. You kept the scale at your ear. So you could listen to the sound, what he is scratching so clearly when you touch the solid scale to your ear. So this is the wooden scale, one meter long. The sound is easily traveled through this distance, through the solid. Right? So you have a railing, metal railing on your steps. This is a metal pipe. Maybe your school railing, in your school or some place. So these are the steps. So one of your friend is here and you are here. He is simply scratching on this pipe. If you keep your ear on this pipe, you can hear the sound. The sound travels through this pipe, even though it is some 5 meter, 6 meter long. So sound propagates through solids. Sometimes we will be 
you might have played telephone game telephone you will make phone with a paper cup so you'll be taking a paper cup like this and you will make a hole and tying a string and somewhere else your friend makes having the one more cup with the string but the string should be straight not loose then if your friend is talking here you can listen it here right this is a paper cup phone how the sound is propagating here the string can be very lengthy 20 meters 30 meters right here when the, your friend is talking here if the string is tight it is very tight not loose then the sound propagates through this string to the other end so what these activities suggest what these activities tell us that is sound propagates through solids sounds propagate through solids you can observe so you are living in a some two storied or three storied building so night time whoever are living in your bottom floor if you are in the second floor whoever are living in the first floor they may switch on their fans ceiling fans if you keep your ear on the floor you can just listen to that sound ceiling fan sound as the fan is rotating you can hear the sound because the fan is attached to the ceiling roof so that is the ceiling of the bottom floor will be the floor of your floor then if you keep your ear on your floor you can listen to the sound so here we can notice with all these activities and these situations we can understand that sound propagates through solids so what we can conclude here sound propagates through air sound propagates through water sound propagates through solids so what is the medium for the propagation of sound air is a medium water is a medium solids are the are the medium through which the sound propagates now let us see how we hear sound through our ears we have seen how sounds are produced in human body that is by the voice box the vocal cords vibration produces the sounds but how we are able to hear the sounds what we have what mechanism we have what special parts we have in your ear to listen to the sound see we have two ears to perceive the sound why we have two ears why can't we manage with one ear yes with one ear also we can listen but why god has given two ears the reason is the two ears helps you to get a stereoscopic hearing stereo stereo hearing you know the difference between a stereo and a mono of course in this generation there is no mono recorder and a stereo but some 20 years back there was a stereo music player and mono music player mono music player will have only one speaker stereo music so stereo it was a trend 20 years back stereo in the sense two speakers left speaker right speaker of course if you have a 2.1 you will have a left speaker right speaker for your music system so that is to produce the sound in two directions left and right likewise we have two ears if you go to a movie theater if you sit in a movie theater it will be having a music surround system from left some sounds will come some right some sounds will come all the sounds they club together in your mind and they will give you a realistic experience that you are in the situation which you are watching so this is a kind of some good excitement experience good entertainment right from left side you are hearing some sounds right side but why we have two ears two ears will bring that sound not only the sound they will help you to locate the direction also you are blindfolded somebody is calling you can turn to that direction somebody is calling from left you can identify they are calling from left because you have two ears some vehicle is approaching you can notice that because you have two ears with one ear it will be difficult to get the location get the direction from which the sound is coming if you don't have this ear this ear is not functioning if somebody calling from that, that direction you will turn this side because that sound will go this way and it is taken by your ear so you will look in this direction you feel that somebody is calling from this direction as this ear is not working so that is the reason we are having two ears for a stereoscopic hearing stereo hearing 
So we have two years. We have years, but how the years are working? The outer part of the year is called as external year, year flap, external year. The external year is like a funnel to collect all the vibrations of the sound. Yes, the vibrations are collected and these vibrations are channelized into a canal. There is a canal which is called as ear canal. The vibrations, they travel through this ear canal and the vibrations are going inside and hitting a part in your ear, a sensitive part. That is the ear drum. Ear drum is a very delicate, sensitive membrane. So whatever the sounds that are coming from outside, they are entering the ear canal and they are hitting the membrane. The membrane is vibrated. The sound itself is vibrating a membrane. So the vibrations that are produced in the sound, those vibrations are vibrating this membrane. Now this eardrum is connected to three small bones. Small bones. Malleus, incus, stapes. These are the very tiny bones that we have in your ear. In fact, those bones are the smallest bones in your body. If somebody asks you, what is the smallest bone in your body? The bones present in your inner ear are the smallest bones, malleus incus tapes. These bones are very small, very delicate. They are connected to this eardrum. As the eardrum is vibrated, these bones, they move. They also vibrate. The moving bones, they will hit one more special part called as cochlea. This cochlea is filled with some fluid. The vibrations, they go to this fluid, right? So these vibrations are converted into nerve impulses and these nerve impulses are carried by these nerves to the brain. They are carried to your brain, then the brain will get the sound, it will analyze what sound it is. This is how you are able to listen to the sounds. So the outside sound waves or vibrations are passed through the ear canal, they hit the eardrum. Eardrum makes the bones to move, the bones they will create some vibrations in this particular part, cochlea, the cochlea has got liquid. So there the vibrations are converted into electric signals, the electric signals are carried by the nerves to the brain. This is how our hearing is done. This is how the ears work. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.